It took Arkansas less than two months to become the 12th state to ratify. Of course, it took a lot longer and a lot of hard, dedicated work to reach that point, but reach it they did, and it helped change politics in Arkansas and America forever. Arkansas Women at the Polls, an anniversary worth celebrating, as we will do next on Arkansas Week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. Hello again, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. Most historians date its origin to 1848, a dozen years after Arkansas achieved statehood. Gathering in a small town in New York, the campaign for women's suffrage began. Twenty years later, in 1868, the first effort to give women the vote in Arkansas was proposed to a state constitutional convention. In the years that followed, there were small advances and multiple setbacks. But in 1919, the Arkansas legislature was among the first to ratify the 19th Amendment, and it did so in a special legislative session 100 years ago Monday. A look back, a look at today, a peek around the corner now. Joining us for this special edition of Arkansas Week, Nell Matthews of the League of Women Voters of Arkansas, the Honorable Lottie Shackelford, longtime political and civic leader, State Senator Missy Irvin of Mountain View, and Kathy Kohler, president of the Arkansas Education Association. My first question is, what am I doing here? But anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm delighted. I'm delighted to be here. It has been, well, a hundred years. It's a centennial. The League of Women Voters. Right. Your first thought. The League of Women Voters is the outgrowth of the organizations that were fighting all across the country to get the 19th Amendment ratified, and once it was ratified. They said, okay, do we just fold up our tents and go home? And the answer was no. Now we need to get women registered. We need to educate them on what the issues are. We need to get them out to vote. So that's one arm of the league. And the other arm is issues. We, we study issues. We come to a consensus. And then we advocate for or against that issue. You advocated. You demonstrated. You, we <laughs> you, do. You did a lot of stuff. Lottie Shackle. Well, I, I mean, uh, just the idea of 100 years, and uh, so it's great that we're celebrating. Uh, well, I probably sh should say I have some ambivalent feelings to, uh, at this point because I'm excited that uh, this is the 100th year, but I'm also a little uh, depressed that we're still fighting so many of the battles over and over again. So it's sort of a mixed bag for me. Paddles. Yeah, well, ba well, issues, uh, they're more like issues, but uh, just say reproductive rights for women, for instance. We're still constantly uh, trying to uh, protect that. So it's, it's a circle. Uh, voting rights, we're still constantly trying to right. protect them. You know, you, you gain by getting a law passed and you're getting provisions done. And then fast forward, as the years uh, pass, something happens. Uh, some of those rights start to dissipate. Well, you, you whether it's reproductive uh, policy or ballot access, whatever, ballot access. Mm -hmm. you're at the polls. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. We are at the polls. Uh, Sometimes not at the numbers we need to be at the polls. Senator Irvin. Well, we're at the polls and we're also elected, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. we, we are the result of all that hard work that they put in 100 years ago. And 
I just, I look back and you look at the pictures and the images of these women and the amount of time and energy and effort they put in towards really gaining that voice. It's such an important voice in our country and in our world. Um, I think our voices are important in our households and they should be just as important in every part of our society and our democracy and our government. So um, I'm excited to be able to be uh, the blessed, I, I reaped the blessings of that work and yeah. being able to be elected and serve in the legislature is, it is monumental when you think about what was achieved back then, a hundred years later. We still have a lot of work to do. I, we, we have a little over 30 of us in the House and the Senate, and that's not enough. I think we need more women in, in elected offices and serving in all different areas, whether it's school board, city government, county government, um, state or federal. So I think there's, it's an important voice and one that um, we're just excited to celebrate and we've achieved great things in the legislature, um, the women have, and I'm excited to talk about that. And it was a celebration of us being able to be at the table and creating policy for the problems that we face today and good solutions. So it's exciting. Having achieved success at the polls yourself, I mean, as a candidate. Yeah. What would you tell other women who are contemplating a, a political race? And is there a structural institutional barrier now to women as candidates? Oh, I think women are great candidates because- Why aren't there more? Yeah, there, there should be more. I, I agree with that. I think, you know, you just have to say, what what is out there in your community and what are you passionate about and that's what drove me to run for office is I looked at my community and I looked at what was going on I'm a big proponent of rural health care rural issues um, I grew up in Little Rock but moved to Mountain View with my husband we've raised our children there the issues are so very different and a lot of times in state government in Arkansas you really have more of a debate not really Republican and Democrat, it's really sometimes rural versus urban mm -hmm. because you have a lot of issues that are very, very different. So um, a lot of times you'll see so much bipartisanship over that certain issue. Um, but it's it for women to get involved I say to them go for it you you have the ability you have the tools and you have the expertise because you know how to negotiate anybody that has children has learned how to negotiate <laughs> and and so you know I have four children and that's my strongest uh, suit I think and my strongest skill is being able to negotiate and figure out okay let's listen to you let's listen to you and let's listen to you and let's figure this out and how we all move forward and what's the best solution and the path forward. That's how good government works, is when you listen to all perspectives and come up with something that everybody can live with. And I think that's good government. I think women have a good working skill to be able to accomplish that. And they're tapped into what's going on in their homes, their kitchen table, uh, kitchen table issues, and they bring good common sense solutions to those different issues that we face. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, we have a different skill set and it's one that's very needed in government. Kathy Cole. So I completely concur with everything they said, but particularly with Senator um, Irvin, because um, I'm gonna give a great example. First off, when women gained the right to vote, families benefited mm -hmm. because women, if you look at the issues that are most important to women generally, they are issues that directly impact their family. Education, medical care, housing. So that that is a, that has been a step forward. And I agree that we need more women in the legislature, more women serving in on quorum courts and, mm -hmm. and following Lottie's example of serving on the city council and a mayor. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm gonna give you a great example Senator Irving mentioned about when women are come together and people have conversations and they can address things a very uh, topical education issue that keeps coming that has come back the last several sessions in the legislature is vouchers and the 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 reason that the voucher legislation has not been successful is because of the impact on rural communities and more importantly because women who are representing those rural communities, and I could name some of them, but I don't wanna embarrass them, have voted against them because they don't see how their children, their community's children, 
uh, will benefit from them if they don't have a private school to send a child to. That's, that's an issue that women can really get behind and stand together. And so we've seen this concerted effort of the women in the legislature looking at it from, in some ways, instead of a philosophical bent, mm -hmm. they're looking at it as what's best for my students, what's best for our children, and what's best for our community. The and practical, I think, the pragmatic. Yes, and mm -hmm. I actually, I think that that has been one of the great gains in the Arkansas legislature as more women have been running to serve. Well, as Senator Irvin, well, uh, uh, Lottie Shackelford mentioned a moment ago reproductive rights, for example, mm -hmm. as a hot issue, but it is, in fact, it is the number of women in the General Assembly. There is stern opposition among the, let's call it the Women's Caucus, and it's mostly, I think, on Senator Irvin's Republican side, mm -hmm. that has been uh, uh, sternly opposed to any liberalization and indeed has voted in support of rolling back, mm -hmm. uh, if that's a fair description, mm -hmm. reproductive policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's polar in, in, in a sense. I mean, you've got all all points on the spectrum, political spectrum, represented by women in the general. Oh, oh, definitely. Uh, I guess when I said I had ambivalent feelings, that's not to take away any any of the gains and and the uh, uh, respect for women and all of what they've done to make those gains. But you know, I, I, and I'm not trying to be a, pessi a pessimist. I'm trying to be a realist. I guess. And probably, um, looking at my age now, I guess maybe it's me. Maybe I'm tired of fighting the same battle <laughs> over and over again. And You're so, 40 next year, right? You, you know what, uh, Steve, I'm, I'm one of those women because I want the good Lord to know I want more. I'm 78. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really thankful for that. But I was taking a look. I was really pleased. We have 32 women in the in the legislature. You know what? 25 or so in the House, and I think seven in the Senate. Uh, we have two women uh, constitutional office officers. We've had two women constitutional office serving at the same time in the past, but we haven't we haven't progressed much further right, than that. Right. We still at two. We've had we have a lot of women today who uh, are CEOs or are I, I think the senator just told me about her daughter just getting a master's degree in building construction. I mean, so we have women today just branching out in all kinds of quote unquote non traditional fields. Mm -hmm. So I'm not taking anything away. It's just that I'm saying. We could be much further along if we didn't have to go back and refight battles that we've already thought yeah. we had won. I guess that was the point I was trying to but make. May I add something here? Because Please. you brought up women going now into non-traditional fields. If you go back to when this passed 100 years ago, mm -hmm. if a woman chose to uh, become, they had limited opportunities yeah, outside definitely. of the home. You could be a public school teacher, but you could not be married. Right. You could be a nurse, but you couldn't be a doctor. Mm -hmm. You could be an airline, I guess, eventually a stewardess or attendant, but eventually, um, uh, but you had to have certain weight and height and all kinds mm -hmm. of restrictions on you. There was, a, for, for young women, and if sure. you became married, if you were a teacher, you no longer taught. As late as the early 80s, when I looked back at contract negotiations between Little Rock School District and its employees, you all might find this interesting. As late as the early 80s, the school district presented a, um, a, a idea that should be in the contract that women would not be able to teach in the second in the semester they were due to deliver mm -hmm. and it didn't matter if they were to deliver in 4 months, 3 months, 2 months or 1 month the i we still the progress is there but a lot of times we don't stop and look at how much we have gained and we allow ourselves to be da be beat down by the things we haven't gained. We have made progress. I'm so happy about your daughter mm -hmm. because the more women, we need more women in construction. Oh, we need that. more women in, in welders. We need mm -hmm. women everywhere because when women work and are engaged, yeah. then they are putting they're they're mm -hmm. going to put the focus on the family, mm -hmm. and that's vital for our success as a society. Nell Matthews. I wanted to add one thing. Yes, the 
the 19th Amendment was passed 100 years ago, but there is a large segment of the population due to Jim Crow laws that was not allowed to exercise their right to vote until we got the Voting Rights Act in 1964. And then we've seen some of those gains rolled back. And now there's other efforts underway to try and restrict who gets to go to the polls as if there's one class of people that we want to make the decisions and the rest of those folks, let's not let them have access to the ballot and keep them out. And we've got to, it's a democracy, yeah, I know it's a republic, but we've got to make this country based on the broadest platform that we can in order to be strong and to carry forward into the future. Senator Irvin, I feel compelled to go to you on that one. <laughs> well, I, I, I think a lot of strong points. I mean, clearly we have uh, differences in political beliefs and opinions. Um, one of the things that the 21 Republican women that are elected in the House and the Senate this year did was our Dream Big initiative, which were bold initiatives for the good of Arkansas. And we specifically tackled issues, I think what you're referring to is absolutely right, that really deal with your community and your family and your home and um, broadband. We think that your children, mm -hmm. I was able to be the sponsor for the governor's initiative on coding and making sure that we have coding in every single school. That is a game changer for rural Arkansas. If you've got people that know how to code, they can live anywhere and work from their front porch. But if they don't have broadband and accessible high-speed internet, then they can't. So we tackled broadband head on. And our children need to be able to do their homework at home. So our hashtag was homework at home. So broadband was one of our issues. Reading and literacy was another one of our issues where every teacher should be certified in the teaching of the brain of the science, um, or science of the brain, and making sure that where all ships rise and not just children with um, disabilities or dyslexia or, or that have problems with reading. Healthcare was one of our initiatives that we chose. Juvenile justice reform was the other and daycare. So we really addressed, I think what you're referring to is correct, those issues that deal with our families and our communities and those are kitchen table topics that no matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you should look and see what we did and what we accomplished and say, yeah, great, that's awesome because mm -hmm. that's so very important. These are real life problems and issues that have to be solved in order for more women to be more entrepreneurships. Um, and have their companies over the internet and being able to live in Mountain View, Arkansas and do that. Um, and more opportunities for our families and our communities. Making sure that UAMS gets NCI designation, National Cancer Institute mm -hmm. designation was one of our initiatives. And working hard to do that and advocate to get $10 million in funding from the state legislature annually for that purpose makes a huge difference in the lives of every Arkansan. So, you know, we are about all these issues, but we're about so much more than just, you know, these certain issues where we might fight about. Um, and so we really tackled those issues head on and created great solutions and great legislation that are game-changing policies for the state of Arkansas. So. Um, I think there's, there are always areas where you can come together as well. Um, the maternal and ma mortality review panel was one that all women in the legislature decided to join on and achieve. So we need to understand why we're having such a high mortality rate in infants mm -hmm. and women. Um, and Arkansas is at the head of that. So all the women signed on to that piece of legislation, two bills, to create these panels to review what's going on when it comes to infant and, and maternal mortality. I want, to, want to stay with Senator Irvin for a second and then back to Mayor Chair uh, <laughs> Shackelford. Lottie because is both of you have achieved success at the polls. Mm -hmm. In doing so, to what extent, rural mm -hmm. and urban, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To what extent did you to encounter gender bias in winning your or in campaigning uh, for your office? How so much of it was still there? Well, I was the first woman ever elected to my seat since Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. I was the first person from Stone County ever elected, and I was the first Republican since Reconstruction ever elected to that seat. Um, so for them Triple to elect me in the hills of 
Arkansas mm -hmm. was a big, big deal. <laughs> they never elected a woman to that Senate seat before um, since the 18, you know, when mm -hmm. Reconstruction was. So uh, it was it was a big, big deal. And but I worked so hard just to get into every single um, home and feed store and you name it. I just I really tried to meet people and connect with as many people as I possibly could. I did face it. Um, Sometimes you face it from women. Oh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. women won't vote for you. Um, yeah. I actually had I had somebody that said, "Well, I'm not going to vote for you because you are wearing a diamond ring." <laughs> I was I said, "Well, actually, if you really knew the backstory of my diamond ring, I didn't have it until five years after I'd gotten married, and I hawked my necklace in order to get our wedding bands because we were so poor when we got married." So. You know, it, it's it's been an interesting road. I think sometimes you you face gender bias for sure. But yeah. I, in my election, I was I'm amazed. I, I was referred to as just a dancer at one point because I have a triple major in political science, communications, and dance, and Deadly. I was actually a, a professional dancer at one point in my life and an adjunct professor at Hendricks College in dance. Um, so, but I was referred to as my opponent as just that little dancing girl. Mm -hmm. So, Lottie, <laughs> Lottie Shackelford, the gender bias. No. To uh, what extent did you feel it? Uh, see it sense it? Much more than I did the racial bias. Uh, wow. And I ran citywide in the city of Little Rock. The first time I ran, I lost. I ran against. Uh, there were five of us: four white males and myself. Came in third and acted as though I had won because I kept on <laughs> working. But then, um, when when you actually get out there, you're just surprised uh, at at how people. Uh, I mean, they already have you locked in in the sense of where they feel women should be. Unfortunately, even with the increase of women being elected today, and with the increase of women running for all positions there's still that bias. I mean, if you just listen sometimes, just a conversation, in my own family sometimes, you'll hear somebody go like, oh, we don't need a woman doing that, or we don't, I mean, you, you know, if we're fair and we listen, mm -hmm. you'll just hear those things come up. So the gender bias, unfortunately, is still very much alive, uh, and the obstacles that women have to overcome are still. I mean, we were talking in the room earlier about uh, Sarah Sanders being attacked for her looks, her, looks. Uh, her dress, mm -hmm. and which is so grossly unfair. Yes. Yes. If you want to attack her policy or, policies, policies, or not the way she what writes. she said or something like that, absolutely. On her looks. So I'm saying here, a mm -hmm. hundred years later, yeah. we've made a lot of strides, but there's still so much more to be done. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, a uh, uh, hundred years from today, when they're celebrating 200 years, <laughs> all of these issues will be resolved. <laughs> may, may, I add, may I add something? Please. When I think about Arkansas women and the barriers we've broken, I always think of Senator Calloway. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I wish more people knew about Hattie oh, Calloway. Yeah. Yeah. I think about Senator Blanche Lincoln. Yes. Um, Sue Cowan Williams, who is a personal hero of mine yes. as an employee of Little Rock School District and what she did and accomplished. Um, and I'm glad to hear Senator Irvin share her first because I think that's one of the things that's missing is that you know who the first astronaut was that <laughs> walked on the moon. We all know who the first male was that did this or that. We're not as um, blessed or talented at telling what women have accomplished. Oh. We should all celebrate that she broke that barrier. Mm -hmm. Not, it shouldn't be a party thing or no, 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 uh, whether no, we no, agree no. or do, disagree on big issues. We should celebrate when women do break that barrier. And in a community, a smaller community, that's even more astounding because mm -hmm. there are fewer, there are fewer people um, who are likely to have encountered a woman who has broken that type of barrier. Um, so I, I hope that going forward, one of the things we come out of this commemoration and this moment is that, that we commit to sharing the story of, short stories of Arkansas women who have broken all kinds of barriers. Well, in the education sphere, are we doing that? 
not as well as we should or could. And I will tell you that part of that is frankly goes back to the implementation of No Child Left Behind when we began to focus on testing students rather than teaching students. And ESSA has been an improvement, but it you still is over testing. If I, I talked to teachers all day yesterday at the ADE Summit and if you ask them, one of their number one things is there's still too much testing and not a lot, enough time to teach. But I think also that there's not as much concerted effort Effort as there was when I first went into teaching a long time ago <laughs> um, to develop materials I mean I remember being given a packet of Arkansas materials Hattie Caraway was the only woman that you know do, we would do like something and we every morning we'd read this is an Arkansas person mm -hmm. but she was the only woman that was mentioned it's time maybe that we bring women together sit down recognize women who have broken a barrier and prepare materials that can be shared in schools as simple as through the morning announcements we do it for other things. There are programs that Here do that. Here comes the lead. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> there are programs that do that. The Women's uh, History uh, project. Museum Project. Uh -huh. Yeah. That you can get these little uh, stands that have the story of a woman that did something amazing. But how many people know where it is? That's well, the problem. We need to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. But see, it's, it's getting the information to the teachers, to their buildings, and saying, you know, when you're coming up with a math problem or a set of math problems, you can do this. You can include women, Arkansas stories. You can teach more than one subject at one time. And with that, we're out of time for our over the air edition. But this is kind of fun. Can you guys and can, can you I ladies just say, hang around go, for just a minute? Let's go, and we'll do U.S. A bit women's more. soccer team. Yay, men! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just that's our over World the air Cup. edition. But go to the web because we're going to chat a little bit longer. Thanks well. for joining us. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89.